Hey you! Did you know that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has references in it? Die, you commie fucker! No. Yes, yes, yes! Oh my god! Obviously, without a doubt, the most referenced thing in the series is music. Nearly all of the characters in the series can be tied back to a musical origin in some way, even going all the way back to its inception. Whether it's character names, outfits, or even in-universe dialogue. There's always an instance of musical inspiration around every corner, or page. But did you also know that these references carry over to the JoJo games too? Well, at least one. JoJo All-Star Battle R released in 2022 and is a remaster of the fighting game All-Star Battle, which came out a number of years ago on the PlayStation 3. Now, aside from being the only JoJo game for Xbox, ASBR, much like the series, has a couple of musical references in it in a very unique way. But I'm not talking about the characters here. I mean, definitely having an Italian twink materialize a little red airplane while screaming Aerosmith is a reference, but what I'm covering falls more on the lines of an Easter egg, a somewhat hidden reference. No, what I'm talking about here is the soundtrack itself. I've been playing the game off and on since it came out, and sometimes I'll hear something while playing certain characters that'll make me go, Wait a minute! I've heard this before. Buried within several characters' themes are little callbacks and motifs that are based off of the original music artists that the characters were named after. It's like the references are coming full circle. Yes, it's like a big, fragile roundabout of Some are a little more noticeable than others, but I was able to find five characters with Easter eggs in their theme. I'm not particularly knowledgeable about music structure or anything, so I'll try my best to convey what I'm hearing and what parts of the song the soundtrack is referencing. I also don't really know how to structure this, so I'll just go in order of which part the characters came from first and work my way down. Now let's get into it. Here are five musical Easter eggs from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, all-Star Battle R, starting with Antonio Zappelli. Ah, Will Zappelli, the original Hamon Master. Without him, Jonathan would have never been able to defeat Dio and the Joestar bloodline would have crumbled before it even really began. Aside from being the first to set the precedent that Joestars work best with allies, Zappelli also brings us our first reference. William Zappelli's name derives from the band Led Zeppelin, which were an English rock band that formed in the late 60s and disbanded in 1980. To get into the reference, here is Will Zappelli's theme, Zappelli the Eccentric. Overall, it's a very fast-paced rock and roll style song, and it fits perfectly in the fighting game genre. However, at about the 1 minute and 10 second mark, we hear this. Now here's Led Zeppelin's hit from their album Physical Graffiti, titled Cashmere. The opening to Cashmere is so iconic, being used in several movies and appearing throughout social media over the years, that it made this part in Zappelli's theme hard to not notice. All-Star Battle's composer is Chikayo Fukuda, who has worked on many video game soundtracks throughout her career, including Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, Asura's Wrath, and, most importantly, Tails Sky Patrol. I believe that drawing from Kashmir was a great way to include a cheeky reference to the band that inspired the character, and it fits perfectly with the frantic and fast pace of the game. Not to mention, it makes Zappelli not only the Hamon master, but the master of living up to his namesake. <laughs> Next, we have an antagonist from the second part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Battle Tendency. This part focuses around an ancient race of people known as the Pillarmen. There are four main ones throughout the part, but today we're going to be looking at the Flame Warrior himself, SCDC. In case it wasn't already clear, SCDC gets his name from the famous rock band from Down Under, ACDC. ACDC has several references to JoJo, however, SCDC is unique in that he was the very first one to reference the band. So, let's look at his theme, The Disturbing SCDC.
Now let's check out ACDC's Back in Black. Much like with Zappelli's theme, including the main riff from Back in Black is a great way to give flair while also referencing what the character is named after. It's even more fitting for ACDC, because when he fights, it's like he's been let loose from the noose. However, SCDC's theme is a two-for-one combo, kind of. Back in Black isn't the only song that SCDC's theme references. Though it might be a little more loose, let's have a listen to the very beginning of his theme. In my opinion, this can be compared to the opening of ACDC's Thunderstruck. And this is what it sounds like slowed down. This one is a little more up for interpretation, but I would love to hear what you all think in the comments below. <laughs> Moving on to our third easter egg, we have probably the most obvious character that would have one, being Akira Otoishi from Part 4. He's a minor antagonist whose ultimate goal in life is to become one of the best guitar players ever, even name dropping Jimi Hendrix and Jeff Beck in the anime. While he uses his guitar for his musical abilities, he handles himself in fights with his long-range stand, appropriately named Red Hot Chili Pepper. With that little bit of background information out of the way, let's check out his theme, Ultra Super Guitarist. Did you catch the reference? I wanted you to think about it for a sec. I didn't want to give it away. Boo! Okay, forgive me for that last joke, come on. It's just water under the bridge. Oh! Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all these chili pepper jokes. I just can't stop. The song it's referencing is Can't Stop. Red Hot Chili Peppers Can't Stop debuted in 2002 from their album, By The Way, and peaked at number 57 on Billboard's Hot 100 in 2003. Throwing in a direct reference to the Chili Peppers and Otoishi's theme is probably the most fitting one on the list, since he as a character fully embraces the rock and roll culture and lifestyle more than any other character in the series. Now my friends, let's not stop ourselves from moving on to our number 4 entry. Oh, yeah. Our number 4 and our number 5 spot both share the same musical inspiration for their characters, however their themes incorporate different songs from the artist. Let's begin with Panicata Fugo from Part 5. Fugo is one of the main protagonists to help in locating the boss's daughter, whoever decides to leave Bucciarati's gang when they decide to betray the boss, leaving them one member short. Although he didn't move forward with the rest of the protagonists, he was able to assist them greatly with the stand of Purple Haze. In All-Star Battle, Purple Haze is able to poison the opponent, really putting the pressure on during the match. Let's listen to Fugo's theme, Faith and Truth. Now let's compare it to Jimi Hendrix's Foxy Lady. Fugo's whole theme is in the style of Hendrix, however that guitar riff sounds the most similar to Foxy Lady. Hendrix's guitar style and skill are unmistakable, and Chikayo Fukuda was able to seamlessly incorporate this into Fugo's theme. Similarly to ACDC, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has multiple Jimi Hendrix references throughout the series, giving a great homage to a great guitarist that was taken too soon for his time. To end off our list for the video, we're taking a look at the main Green Dolphin Street inmate herself, Jolene Cujo from Part 6. Jolene is the daughter of the series' most popular protagonist, Jotaro Cujo. Though Jolene was the first main female protagonist, she's not the only one that references Jimi Hendrix, as we've seen before. Jolene's stand is called Stone Free, which comes from the Hendrix song of the same name. However, the reference here comes from another song in Hendrix's discography. Here is Jolene's theme, I Want to Watch the Starlight. Now, here is Jimi Hendrix's hit song from his debut album, 
Purple Haze. Jolene's theme is one of my favorites in the whole game. It really captures the sound of an intense yet arcadey battle that's about to take place that throws the players right in the middle of it. Having Hendrix's classic opening to his song only deepens Jolene's theme and gives it that extra oomph. It's also interesting to note that Purple Haze was used for Jolene and not Fugo's theme. You would think that Fugo would use Purple Haze as his inspiration for his theme since his stand was directly named after it. However, it still works for Jolene, since after all, they were both inspired by Hendrix. So that's it for the video. I'll be honest, it was a little difficult to come up with 5 spots for this list. There are a ton of characters in the game to look at and listen to, and while many of them capture their artist's style, like Bruno with the Rolling Stones and Listo with the Sex Pistols, these are the only ones that I could find with a direct connection. However, I'm pretty sure that I missed some, so if you played this game and hear something familiar, comment it down below. If you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe or give it a like, as it will give a better chance for more people to see it if they'd be interested. But whether you like, subscribe, or even dislike, you don't have to do any of those things. What you do have to do is have a nice day. Alright everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!